Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Marvel Snap video. Here to talk about the coming up soon-ish, as soon as whenever that patch goes live, pull five characters and which ones I think would probably be best actually using collector tokens for. So that's going to be today's video. Hope you like, leave a comment, subscribe, do all that other stuff, but let's get into it. So what am I talking about specifically? So... When the new patch goes live, there will be a pool 4 and pool 5, and then we'll finally have collector tokens that will allow us to basically get cards. Because currently in the game Marvel Snap, you can't actually get cards. Um, you have to get them for random ways, but there's going to be a shop in which it's going to be easier for you to get them. Now, that's great. Now, here's the problem that they've created, is that <laughs> pool 3 cards are worth a 1,000, Pool 4 cards are worth 3,000, and pool 5 cards are worth 6,000. And at the moment now, um, pool 5 cards are borderline impossible to pull. I think the math on it is, is that basically you'd have to spend somewhere close to 20,000 credits to maybe get one. It's like, it's the rates are very, they're comically hot, like low to actually get one. Um, so it would probably be in your best interest to get one of these guys over the other ones. I'm not saying, hey, at the end of the day, do what you want to do, but I'm here to tell you that, you know, it's smarter to get one of these six, but thankfully there's only six. Now, unfortunately, that cost is in 6,000, and even someone like me who's over at collection level 3,000, I have to basically pick two of these. So let's go over them, and I'll give you my specific thoughts on them, and you'll feel, feel free to do the same for me if you have anything that I'm specifically looking over. So, let's start with uh, Bost over here, which is a very interesting unit because she is a one drop, one, uh, one power, whose entire on reveal effect is set the power of all cards in your hand to three. Um, what does that specifically do? Well, the first thing that came into my mind was that obviously you want to use her with Cerebro, Cerebro 3 specifically. Uh, Cerebro, it helps kind of reset the fact that Scorpion basically killed the Cerebro deck. <laughs> And to be fair, it still kind of does if you wait till, if you drop this on turn one and then you're just basically screwed. Um, that was my first initial thought. But then I was reminded, oh wait, it sets it to all the three. So if we actually filter it here and we go to power minus one, that makes Adam Warlock a three, uh, three power. It makes Angela three power. It makes Ant-Man three power. It makes Zola three power. It makes Bishop basically almost back to pre-nerf Bishop. Black Widow's up into a 3, Bucky is gonna die so it doesn't matter, Cerebro's a 3 power, which is very nice. Dagger could get the 3, you could get Deadpool the 3, start that going. Dracula it doesn't matter, I would say Elektra it doesn't matter either. Forge is just nice because now he's just a 2-3 and that makes him on par with a lot of stuff. Gambit is basically back to his pre-nerfed form at a 3-3. Green Goblin is actually a nerf if you get him the 3 powers, don't do that, you wouldn't ever want to run the 2. Hazmat, that's a big buff to Hazmat. Hawkeye actually gets a little bit better, because now he's a 1-drop who turns into a 5. That's much better. Uh, obviously, that's an African Goblin. You would never use it with Goblin. Iron Man turns into a 5-3. Ironheart into a 3-3. Th uh, Jubilee into a 4-3. Morb over here gets at least 3, even if you don't end up discard discarding anything. Here's the big one. Mr. Negative goes to 3. Pre-nerf almost. In pre-nerf form he was a 4-4 and he was a menace and then he was nerfed to a 4-1 until finally being a 4-1. Uh, kind of crazy if you're able to get him back to his pre-nerf form. Uh, almost close to that. The Mystique is now a 3-3. Nakia is a 3-3. Patriot's a 3-3. Psylocke's a 2-3. Rogue, who is supposed to be a 1-drop specifically to help with the fact that her ability is extremely good, has now turned into a 3-3. Sandman is now a 4-3, which is crazy. Sunspot, you could potentially make it a 3. Does not much change to Squirrel Girl or Taskmaster on this one. Collector, you get a 3. Hood turns into a 1-3 that gives you a 6-9 power on turn 1 with that one. Crazy. Venom gets to start with 3. Wasp turns into a 0 cost 3. <laughs> White Tiger into a 5-3 and Wolfsbane into a 3. There's a lot of fun that you could be had with this. And even this, these are all cards that have like 1 power. If you want to go in even crazier, you go into the two power ones, and you can see a little bit more brew turns into a 3-3 three, three that produces 9, basically. Uh, a little bit of a diminishing returns when it comes to these dudes, though. 
Um, Mr. Sinister would be funny with the turn into a three. Small buffs, obviously, for this one. But, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of fun to be had, and the more cards that you forget to have negative power, or a one power, or zero power, are going to be impacted huge by what boss does. So I think that's kind of fun. Very fun little uh, <laughs> deck you could end up making. And I think probably would fit best in something like Mr. Miracle or Cerebro. Um, Mr. Negative for sure, because Mr. Negative you have a lot of cards that are high cost, but low attack, and if they're in there in your hand, they're useless to you. But it completely changes when it's the other way around. Alright, Galactus. This is gonna be... Ah... Uh, I saw some people saying that this could potentially be annoying. So Galactus is a 6-3. On reveal, if he's the only card in a location, destroy all other locations. Um... That's yeah, extremely good. The reason is is that there's actually a lot of cards that you can kind of go into this. The reason I saw a lot of people didn't like it is that it basically makes the first four games useless because Galactus just gets played on turn five. And you'd be able to play them on turn five thanks to cards like uh, Electro, Psylocke, anything that gives you energy and let you play him early, you can just play him on turn 5. Then you can stack your board with Wolverine so that he will bounce around a whole bunch and then he will eventually land in the right space. Um, Sabertooth so it becomes a zero drop that you can use in there. Lady Death, you will be killing a lot of things using this ability, so Death will basically go from 9 drop to all the way to zero. Um, and yeah, just in general, it's going to be an extremely powerful move because it's going to kill the whole vibe of everything i don't know if it'd be good <laughs> i don't know how good it's gonna actually be but it is definitely a thing that's gonna be like is this guy running just a high like cost deck or is he running um galactus it's something you're gonna have to think about you never want to play him on turn six you always want to play him on a turn before then so it actually gives you time to build up your board and stuff if you play him on turn six and you're just kind of like praying and hoping if that was the case then he would be an extremely fair card but that's not the way the game goes um so yeah i think he's gonna end up being very funny and interesting to see how he kind of plays out there's a lot of ways that you can build the deck specifically to see kind of how it's gonna go and no matter what your opponent's just not gonna be ready for it um, the most obvious way to kind of stop this deck is to have lane control, to force them to make it so that no matter what, you can always ha there's always something. You could play Viper to give your opponent cards to make it seem like, okay, so as long as they have cards, you can't use Galactus' effect. That's definitely a way to counter the deck if the deck gets too out of control, but for right now, there's not much to worry about until we see. It's all hypotheticals, but he definitely seems like he could be an extremely good card if, <laughs> depending on how annoying you kind of make him. Uh, next. Next is Shuri. This one. Shuri. So she's a four. Four cost. Two. Her ability is on reveal double the power of the next card you play. Kind of crazy. Nuts. Nutso. crazy -o. There's no denying it on this one. Um, this ability can just be easily m manipulated. There's so many things you can do. There is... I think the combo I saw, which was really funny, which was you use Forge, give plus two, and then you, um, you try and put it all on the same board. So you you do that, you get, then you put down Wong, I think. Where is Wong? He's somewhere here. If this might end up leading to Wong actually getting Wong, so the next on reveal happens twice. He'll get a nice little plus two from that. Uh, and then you play Shuri. And then after that, you play Odin. And then after Odin, you follow it up with uh, Wasp. And Wasp will get somewhere close to 100 power. Just because of how much it's going to end up constantly looping the abilities of everything else. Of giving plus two, then times two, then plus two, plus times two. Um, Odin himself will, I think, end up being at 36 power. But Wasp will hit somewhere close to the hundreds. <laughs> Which is really funny to think about. And not even if you're not doing that. Obviously this has ways to go with Black Panther. Where it just makes the deck stupid. Um, this might actually kind of justify you maybe playing, trying to play to turn 7. But you'll never be able to pull off the full combo. It gives you at least another chance of going 
um, if you don't pull Wong, you can go Shuri, then Black Panther, and then boom, Zola, and then put him a whole bunch of other places and stuff like that. Um, but in general, you can do this with so many other cards just to make them an unreasonable amount of power. That's so crazy. Um... And specifically in Mr. Negative, this turns into a two-cost, four-power that has the ability to double the power of the next card you play, and a whole bunch of your cards in your deck are going to be zero-cost, so... And five-power, like Iron Man, so then you get a ten... ten-drop Iron Man that gives 20-20 spot. Kind of crazy. Pretty good. Very much worthy of being in the same spot of everyone else. Uh, definitely feel like she has... Uh, a lot of potential of how she's going to be doing. It's going to be very obvious that you're setting up Shuri, so that obviously also means Shang-Chi is going to be back in a in a big way. Uh, a lot of these cards feel like, man, well, except for Bust, uh, Shang-Chi is going to be real useful for this. Next, Super Scroll. I think this is the card that's going to completely break meta in every single conceivable way. I think it's act actively kind of dumb that they did not nerf this man in any kind of way. But here's his effect. Description ongoing has the ongoing effects of all enemy cards. If you're going to ask me what happens if the enemy has a super scroll, I have no fucking idea. I assume that it's going to just copy each other's abilities ad nauseum until the game breaks or something, or until they decide that they've had it enough. Um, that's insane. This ability is insane. So much of the game is based off of ongoing effects. The only thing that could really counter it is if you used an ongoing effect that, that had a negative... Um, ability like electro for example then in that case they would kind of think twice before playing super scroll and stuff like that but more likely than not you're not doing that and instead you're building a we're fighting a wong deck and if they're fighting wong then now basically you have wong without ever having needing to do anything it's basically a free rogue i think this guy basically ups the the uh the usefulness of rogue just because of how much i think rogue would help deter a lot of things because if the rogue steals super scroll and then you can just basically re reverse uno and say no you they have a useless 4-2 on the board and you now have the ability to steal their ongoing effects i think that's really crazy um we'll see how crazy he actually ends up being again in my mind this guy completely destroys a lot of the meta because so much of the meta is ongoing effects um all those crazy effects you see where it's like oh man uh, onslaught, 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 followed by, um, <laughs> followed by, uh, Blue Marvel. That's crazy. That's a two-card combo. Now, imagine you just play Super Scroll and you just take that combo for yourself. That's what Super Scroll is. That's crazy to me. And I feel like, I don't know, I don't know what, I feel like he would probably end up being a six drop to be 100% real with you. But we'll see. We'll see where he kind of ends up. Maybe I'm overestimating him. It's t entirely possible. But right now in my mind, I just look at this guy and I go, this is a mistake. This is actively a mistake. If you think Black Panther was really strong and possibly a mistake, this is like a mistake times two. Next, we have Thanos. This is obviously the most goofiest of them all. <laughs> this is the one that's going to be... It's going to be really interesting to see what people build off of this. Because I think this deck uh, is probably a little bit bad. Because you're going to have to put in one, two, three, four, five, six of stones in there. And yeah, the stones have nice effects, but a lot of these stones can be kind of taken down pretty easily with Killmonger. Which Defree pointed out to me, actually you probably would want to get them killed by Killmonger so you could free up board space. Um, which is a very good point, I didn't really think about that. But you could definitely do that and there would be some synergy in there with Lady Death and stuff like that. But the problem is, is that you still would not have enough to warrant a lot of stuff in what you're using here. And putting your deck with this many cards is kind of crazy. Like, think about that location that puts in five rocks. And think about how often you draw the rocks and how much they end up not being useful to you. That's kind of what I feel like a lot of these stones are going to end up being. Especially because they're like 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 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 and 1-3 for power stone. <laughs> the ultimate power, a 1-3 drop. Um... It's going to be interesting to see what kind of deck people build around him. Because at this moment, he feels like the one that's definitely the most gimmicky. You'd think it would be someone like Galactus, but actually Galactus has a lot of cool synergies with stuff. And could potentially be very harmful to the game state because he's destroying so much. While Thanos is like the exact opposite. <laughs> Where Thanos is like, ah, uh, okay, they're running a Thanos deck. This is like Exodia. Do they draw Exodia? 
let's see. It would be very fun to do, but I don't think it's a threat, so maybe not the best idea to actually go out of your way. I think out of all of these, you can make a case as to this is the one you should probably get the most out of all of them. Um, I'll say Thanos is the one where I'd say maybe just leave it the chance if you get him or not. <laughs> That's what I'll say. And finally, we have Valkyrie. This effect is very good. On reveal, set all cards in this three power. That includes your opponent. <laughs> So, hey, do you have a big ol' Infinite that you're really proud of? Well, congratulations, he's now, uh, 3 power. <laughs> he's nothing. <laughs> and then if you're running Cerebro specifically, that's all you need. This basically offsets Scorpion. Because it sets everything to 3 power. Are you running, perhaps, some of the cards with all the negative or zero or anything power? This is just an increase to you. Basically, if the board is 4-4 four, four on both sides, and you turn it into a 12 versus, versus 12, at worst it's a tie, but if you're running blue Marvel, that's a win. Because you're going to be getting both sides to 3-3, three, three, and then the plus 1, plus 1 will, the plus 1, plus 1, the plus 1 will drive you over the case, over the edge. And I think that's really cool. So, yeah. I can see her being used in both ways to be like, the ultimate mitigator of like, hey, bringing dudes down to your level. Like Black Panther, for example? Put Valkyrie and Black Panther in the same thing, use a Daredevil control, see where they're going to be playing playing Black Panther. And Valkyrie completely fucking kills that dude. He's dead. He gets to activate his ability twice, that's nice. Valkyrie shows up and now he's 3. He's nothing. At worst he could get is a 12. If they still go with the Mondo thing, but for the most case they're just going to give up. Because now you completely have set them off and they know how to do it and stuff like that, so. Very cool. So yeah, all these cards I definitely think are going to be worth uh, the 3000 The only one I'm not sure of is Thanos. But the rest of these I think will have a place in decks already. And can be made with cool decks around them. Um, Galactus being maybe the one where it's like... <laughs> he could potentially be very ruinous to the game. It kind of sounds like he's a little bit like the leader. Where the leader has obvious ways that you can beat the leader. But there's no way to tell if someone's going to be running the leader until it's too late. You're never going to know if someone's going to be running Galactus until it's too late. Because they're still going to be playing the same basic destroy cards that you're always using. Um, so it's going to be like, ah, damn it, are they? Because it looks like they're just running generic shit. So I don't actually think that. So we'll see. Um, definitely a cool first six batch. Kind of interested to see what the other dudes are. Obviously, I know a lot of the unreleased cards thanks to this site right here. Mar uh, Marvel Snap Dot Fan. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see which ones get put into three and which which ones get put into four, which one gets put into five. If I had a guess as to which one of these would probably eventually go down to four, it would be Thanos. <laughs> Thanos would be the first one I would think of. Um, and yeah, the rest of these seem like pretty solid to be put in five. So it's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, that's my specific advice at this. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like. It helps a whole bunch. Uh, show support. It's your number, way of way, number one way of doing it. I like this game a whole bunch. So I'm always happy to make videos about it and give my specific thoughts on cards and stuff like that. So that's the end of the video, everyone. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.